Well, today is going to be interesting. We are talking about the most covered topic in the Bible. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There is, it's, there's no coverage in the Bible <laughs> on Christian dating. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and give it a moment for all of our single followers to jump on uh, <laughs> to, to listen. Are you going to be able to hold it together for this I one? I think so. I'm, You've been married so long I that know. I'm you, like, you forgot what, what it was like. What does this even mean? But I actually, I love, I love talking to young adults about dating because I just feel like, like you said, there's like no coverage, not none, but basically. And, and it just feels like we're like when we're single, not now. Um, but when you're single, you're just kind of like wandering through, like, how do I find the right one? So oh I love this. You said <clears throat> how to find the right one, keep the right one, and be the right one. Mm. Because well how said, often Miles. do you see people that are like, I want this perfect wife, and I want her to love Jesus, and, a hood and I want her to be a worship leader, and I want her to be a f- like reading her Bible three hours a day, and I want, and this kid's like, a joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. You called him a hood rat. Street rat, hood rat, right. whatever you want to call him. So we actually went on Instagram and TikTok and we asked you guys to send in your questions. Because mm-hmm. we can sit here and we can give <clears throat> all the advice we want, but we've been married for almost 11 years. Yep. Um, so we're a little bit out of the dating scene, but we have a very wonderful and healthy thriving marriage it's so good it's so good you guys that's the next episode just our marriage in our life <laughs> we're just gonna talk about how good our <laughs> marriage is um but anyway so i feel like we have some good advice to give okay i'm you ready, ready? Okay. i want to hear the questions all right first question i love this one i'm actually gonna put two questions together oh great make it hard for me they go like hand in hand high school all over again. right <laughs> all right first one is how to stay pure in a relationship okay and the second question which we can kind of tie in is is it unrealistic to expect men to pursue purity in a dating relationship? Take it away. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Which one do I start with? Start with the men one. <laughs> Why'd you roll your eyes for that part? <laughs> it. The men one. No, because you're a man. Speak to it. Um, it sounds like somebody is asking a question um, because they, they desire for their man to lead them in purity. Yeah. But you should be leading yourself in purity, not expecting your man to lead you in that because... Even if you... Well, obviously, if you're a woman. Look, there's leadership, but that's talking about marriage, not dating. Right. So you're not letting your boyfriend lead you in purity because if that happens, you both are failing. I know it. Trust me. You're (laughs) failing. Oh, by the way, here's just a little preface. Oh, here we go. Miles has no faith in any of (laughs) y'all. He's like, if you're in love... Get married. Yeah, that that's Miles' answer. I'm sorry. It is still the answer. I know. I think you just think every single person How do you is always burning with passion at all times. How do you remain pure in a relationship is literally asking, how do you not have sex before marriage? Right. How do you remain pure in a relationship? You get married and then sex is pure. What if they're not the one? What if then don't you, date them. No, you need time. This is like one of the only things we don't agree on. You need time. You sat me down and said, I'm the right one for you. Because I am. You basically said, marry me or don't. So the fact that we have flopped sides here is really interesting (laughs) to me. Yeah, flip flop. And now here I am sitting you down. But I knew. Oh. But I knew. How'd you know? just knew. Okay. So is it not possible for but people to just But we knew each know? other for a long time. Okay. There you go. Boom. There we go. How do you have purity in a relationship? Don't jump into the relationship without first having a friendship. Okay. I like okay. That. Because when you're just friends in the beginning, you're not going to be worried about being alone together one-on-one in your apartment when nobody else is there with you. Right. And the second you do that, you're setting yourself up for impurity. You have to set yourself up to make the right decision. How do you do that? You have boundaries. Hey, look, guess what? I love boundaries. As I'm getting to know you, like we're gonna get to know each other in public because if I get private with you, <laughs> I don't even know what's gonna happen there next. There he is, the burning with passion 24 seven. Well, when are we airing this episode? Is it after 11 o'clock at night? Because it depends. <laughs> All right. Right. All right. right. What, what, what you have given advice this? to people and told them to get married and they broke up. And they are probably thanking Good. God that they didn't get Good. married. You know why they broke up? Because I put the pressure on them to say, are you really the one for each other? And they're like, oh my gosh. They caved. If they were really the right one for each other, they would have jumped in and got married, right? 
whoever uh, I did that for, you're welcome. <laughs> they know and who they are. your future spouse, you're welcome. That's true. Some of them are engaged now. They, I think there needs to be some holy pressure on some people. There was not this dating culture in all of history until we gave it. That's why grandparents, you always hear them, oh, we got married, I was 18 and she was 17. Now that seems crazy, yeah. but in the 50s, and guess what, they're still together. Yeah. Wow, why did that happen that way? Well, because they, they continually choose each other. I, this is, we're going to a whole other thing. Now divorce is just so easy. And divorce right, is should just- Should we slow down then? Because well, what question are we Marriage and here? divorce 101, okay. Okay, so then how to stay pure in a relationship. You said boundaries, time, get be friends first. Don't just feel like you have to jump right into a relationship. I think when you have a pure friendship with a with somebody that <clears throat> you have an interest for, yeah. then when you know you want to. Is that to, possible? Oh, it's, to have a pure friendship with someone that you're interested in. Absolutely. Really? D has no faith in you. No. Do you see how things are switching no. here? She puts all of her frustrations and emotions on me. No, you think, you think if there's feelings in a friendship, y'all can just stay friends? No. I don't not say that's not impurity just to, to okay. whether it's staying You're friends saying or just relationship. purely be friends. Start off with a pure okay. friendship. And when you say, oh, this person, this girl, like the I've gotten to know her and I could see myself falling in love with her. Then when you get into a relationship, it should be very fast whether or not you know, especially when you get a little bit older. Yeah. Like, look, I get it. People bring baggage into their relationships and they're doing all this stuff and they're healing. And if you just broke up with somebody, you probably shouldn't be dating the next person and say, well, they're not the one. So let me find out next week if that one's the one. You're not the one. That's the problem. Okay. You <laughs> yes. got to figure that. No, that's so real. That is so real because you see people go from relationship to relationship to mm -hmm. relationship. I get it. I was that girl. Okay. I get it. Because I saved you. you did save me. I'm just kidding. Me. Jesus saved her. He did. Through me. Wow. But it's, it's a real thing <laughs> because there you want to, we, especially women, but regardless, you want to feel loved. You want to feel supported. You want that, you want that love story. You want that partner. You want to start your lives together. I get all that. But if you can take a, a genuine snapshot of your life, of your especially your dating life, and be like, wow, I've literally just gone from relationship to relationship. I cannot be alone. Mm. Then that is mm -hmm. a bigger yeah. um, telltale for you of where you really, of what you should do. Yeah. And what you should do is really seek the Lord. Yeah. And, and, and find who you are and find your identity yes. as a single person yeah. first. Because... Yeah. <clears throat> if you bring this baggage into the relationship of, of needing them, when they let you down, it's going to be catastrophic. Mm -hmm. And that's just in everyday letting down, not even cheating and that kind of stuff. This is like, you've got to be as much of a, a, a independent person in, in Christ, who you are in Christ before you can go into a relationship. So we would all agree and say that to get married, you should be an adult right yes that's an easy one right a million percent. the reason we say that is because there's maturity there right so there's physical emotional and i guess the mental's not even fully there when you turn 18 you know that's not until you're 25 you get that that's full right. maturity but you're saying that we have these laws set in place and there's a reason for them and there's good reason for it yeah you shouldn't be getting married when you're 12 that's weird and your parents are crazy whatever um, but there should be maturity there so on the same spectrum there needs to be spiritual maturity yeah so like you said you yeah. need to have, no matter if you're a guy or girl, it doesn't matter if you're lonely or if you're an extrovert, introvert, it doesn't matter. You need to have your identity in Christ. Yes. So that you're bringing a whole person to the table when you get into a relationship. Yes. Otherwise, you're going to have false expectations for your spouse in the future. Because if I wasn't made whole by Jesus first and I was seeking that from you, right. I would always resent you for the rest of our marriage. I would never measure up. You can't measure up. Yeah. So we have to get that part you first. You have to be 100%, 100%. You have to bring it into yes. the marriage. I'll never forget. There was this kid in college. There was this like uh, this guys and girls breakout in this uh, Campus Crusade for Christ event that we did. And there was like 300 guys and 300 girls, but they were in separate rooms. And there, it was like a Q&A. And, you know, you get college boys asking questions. You just never know what's going to come out. But this, this okay. guy... And you try to sound super wise and whatever. And he asked, uh, this guy, his name's T David Pozzoli, was the speaker and the, and the director of this ministry. And he says, hey, uh, how do you know that you're spiritually mature and ready to date somebody, to find the one? 
And David Pozzoli's answer was, you'll know you're spiritually mature when you're not asking that question. Wow, yeah. Because basically he was saying, you have not fi found your identity in Christ right, yet because you're right. still, oh, I'm going to find my completion with my wife. And right. yes, there's, there's an aspect of completion. I know that Eve is the helper of Adam, but Adam also knew the Lord and walked with the Lord. Right. So when yeah. he brought Eve into his relationship, she was the helper, not the complete, not the one that like completed gave him, him everything right. that he could ever need. Right. No, he, she completed him, but he, he was a whole person, a whole body, a whole spirit, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I think that's needed. I heard this really good thing. I know I just said, you know, it's a hun you, you always hear it's 50, 50 in your relationship. And then I heard, no, it's a hundred percent, hundred percent, which I always carried with me. My pastor has taught me that back when I was like 14. And, but then I actually recently heard, I don't even know who they are. It was like scrolling through TikTok, and they were like, you know what we do? We basically tell each other at the end of the day where they are in their percentage. So it's like, Hey, are you a hundred percent today? And probably most of the time you're not because you're not Jesus. So they'll be like, I'm like 60% today. And they're like, okay. So it's almost like the other one knows, all right, I got to carry a little mm -hmm. more. Or they'll, they'd be like, I'm like 85%. I'm, I'm feeling good today. It's like, great. Cause I'm 5% oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So that's where it comes in of the completion mm -hmm. part where it's like, we bear one another's burdens, but yeah. it's not that you are my everything. Yeah. And I am only, this yeah. has nothing to do with purity. Let's move Next on. Next question. Okay. This is a super quick one. I know exactly what you're going to say. I know how you're no, going to answer it. I'm just kidding. What's the question? <laughs> Pretty much. What to do when you know that they aren't the one. And they said 100%, but they believe, so the partner believes that you are the one for them. I stick with my answer. No. Right. Next, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, what I will say is this. Um, the longer you drag that relationship out, the more you're going to hurt the person who believes that you are 100% the one for them. Right. So if you're in a relationship and you know 100% they're not it, you are avoiding the confrontation that's going to hurt them. But if you keep avoiding it, it's just going to hurt them even more. So yeah, you need to end the relationship. Um, I'll tell you why you need to end the relationship because if you drag it out because you hang on to the glimmer of hope that maybe, just maybe, just maybe, just maybe, then you'll get married and you'll still be living with that. Just maybe, just maybe, just maybe. And it will never come because that's Ooh. the person that you married. And you're expecting them to be the one that you hoped they would be. But because you decided already that I'm going to commit myself to the one I knew it was, wasn't the one, you are causing a lifelong problem. And I would fear for what that marriage would look like yeah. because you'd be constantly pursuing someone that doesn't exist. Yes. So end it now and save yourself and the one that, that believes that you're the one for them. Yeah. It's going to be heartbreaking. And you know, it's it. funny because when, when I read this, I was like, okay, easy answer, break up, move on. But I think it's also important to, to find out why they are not the one for you. So why do you feel that way? What's missing? What is it? Are they not a believer? Is there not the attraction that you want in a spouse, which is okay to want to be attracted to your spouse. You don't have to I mean, settle I'm happy for that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Wow. Yeah. Um, they still do that? I don't know. Okay. Um, but it's like, there's a reason that you're not a hundred percent. So you have to, you have to come to terms with what, why is that? Like, obviously there's probably something great about this person. You started dating them, hopefully, but what is that reason? Mm -hmm. And then, and then that's kind of for you, like, okay, these are the things that I desire in a spouse. These mm -hmm. are the things that I actually do want. Yeah. And, and it's okay to have like non-negotiables. You know what I mean? Like for you. I had some non-negotiables. I didn't know it was going to be for you, but I knew I needed someone calm and gentle and not angry and patient Keep and going, what else? cute okay. and All funny. Right. No, right. yeah, okay. I knew I wanted to be fr like, I had these things, yeah. obviously a believer, a follower of Jesus. That's top of the list, but, but find like what, why is it, mm -hmm. you know, hundred percent they're not for you yeah. and then take that with you into yeah. the next relationship but break up with this yeah, one. I think you have to go back, go backwards and say, when did it go? Cause you got to the relationship at some point. Cause you were like, right, this person right. is there was everything, something, of, something about yes. them. Right. So you knew, uh, at some point that hundred percent of being all in went to 90, 80, yeah, yeah, yeah. 70. Yeah. So I think you need to go back in your relationship and figure out where was it that those things started to separate me from them. Um, obviously you're still perfect to them because they still, they're still hundred percent all in for you. Um, but this way, when you're looking at, guess what? You start off with a friend. The next time you meet a friend and you'll start to see, oh, they have some of the same things going in their life that turned me off with this last one that I broke up with. 
Therefore, I will not jump in right. hoping they'll get to 100% when they're never going to get there. Yes. This is why friendship matters. This is why where you meet people matters. I understand the world of online dating and that's how people are meeting and stuff. Meet in a church. <laughs> you meet while you're serving with but somebody. But don't go to church will... just to meet someone. But it's okay if you meet them in church. Yes. But don't use church as a dating app. Absolutely not. But it's better than a dating app. <laughs> I guess. Yes, Next but question. if your intentions are to go and... Next question. Right. I, there's a lot I feel like we don't agree on. It's okay. Okay. I like Freedom this House is a dating church for the young adult <laughs> Christian of, of the modern day. Great believer. young adults at our church. That's all I'm going to say. And, and a lot of them are single. single. Yeah, okay. I like this question. If I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I've received the gift of tongues. Is it okay to be with someone who doesn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit? <laughs> Do you want the R rated version oh, answer yeah. or the PG one? I want the R rated answer. Jeez, D. We're <laughs> pastors here. Goodness gracious. <laughs> If you can't agree on spiritual tongues, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh in your sex gosh, life that's marriage. on R. That's corny. You're so All right, I don't know. We'll find out from our audience. If you think it's corny, give us a thumbs Wait, up. Wait, actually, you didn't listen to what you said. What'd you finish? Wow, you you're not even listening. <laughs> I thought I knew where you were going. What'd you say? I don't even remember. Let's keep <laughs> okay. moving on. What was no. the question? So what is that? Like, oh yeah, tongues. Can I be with someone that doesn't so, believe in the gifts of the spirit if they're filled with the spirit? Um, I'm just going to tell you it's going to be difficult for you mm -hmm. because. That's just one thing. Right. Like speaking in tongues for a lot of people, it's it's such a big separator for people. Like, oh, you believe in speaking in tongues? You don't believe in speaking in tongues? For some reason, that one concept, because I think a lot of people sum up the filling of the Holy Spirit to speaking in tongues. Right. So then they say, well, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not filled with the Spirit. While the other right. side is like, no, that's not even, even close to the story here. Right. Um, but at the same time, if there is an aspect to your walk with Christ, speaking in tongues, for example, for a lot of people, including myself, we would say it's the most intimate part of our relationship that I have something so special with the Lord that it's not for anybody else. The Bible says when you're speaking in tongues, you're not speaking to men, but to God. Yeah. There's something so special about this gift that was given to the church in the very birth of the church, and it's still happening to this day. So to have something like that separate you would be very difficult because I would be afraid of well, what else is going to come up in these conversations. Mm -hmm. What's the next thing? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you believe about salvation in the Lord? What do you believe about Jesus, period? What do you believe about making Jesus the center of your life? Is he everything or just a part? Like, where does that conversation end if somebody mm -hmm. doesn't want everything mm -hmm. that the Lord has to give them? Yeah, I just think even just personally about our relationship and the things that we've had to walk through and the real mm. spiritual battles that we've endured yeah. and that I've always felt so just protected and and even just supported spiritually by you because I know that you know how to like wage war in the spirit mm -hmm. and because we do believe in this and and then even thinking of just other gifts of the spirit with whether it's prophetic or whatever yeah. just how you encourage that in me like you know yeah. what the lord has placed in me and so you're always just like pushing me and and, mm -hmm. and empowering me and and not like challenging like bad but just like always lifting me up yeah. in that yeah. and so i even think about like man if i if i believed that which i do and i've experienced that since i was a, a child and then we got married and you just didn't I wonder even as a wife, like what would that look like for me? Like to submit to you, like, okay, do I just place these feelings aside and just not operate in them? Do I just second guess everything that I've experienced and believe my whole life or, you know, and then, or vice versa, if you're the guy, it's like, yeah. okay, now do I have to like pull her up and, you know, is this yeah. something that if she never steps into, which again, isn't like, is she, are they gonna go to hell? No. But what, is, what, is, what are you missing on earth? Mm -hmm. But what if that doesn't happen? Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a resentment? Is there going to be a disappointment? Yeah. And so, yeah, I think it does just open the door because what I've noticed, even again, in being in a, in a healthy relationship, obviously we can disagree on things like clearly we do because this is what we disagree on a few no, things. We don't. But yes, we do. <laughs> but, you know, the stuff that matters is like, you have to al you have to be aligned. Yeah. And so if this matters to you, then it's something that needs to be aligned yeah. in the relationship. That's that's where I got where two I'm things. At. One is if you're dating um and you're like, but man, there's something so special about this person, um I would just challenge you to actually pray for this person. 
The Bible mm-hmm. says that the you know the armor of God. You have all these different pieces that we're supposed to to wear because we're we're in a spiritual battle while we're here on this earth. It says that you have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And immediately following that, it says praying at all times in the spirit. So I would say uh, if you are in a disagreement or you're like, oh man, they don't they don't believe in something, I would say it's because they have not encountered God that way yet. So maybe you need to take on the responsibility of, I'm going to pray for this person. I'm going to pray for, for them that they're going to encounter God the way that, because I know for a lot of people that were filled with the Holy Spirit, they're like, I want everybody to encounter God the way that I just encountered God. I don't want anybody to miss out on what it means to be filled by the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist came talking about at the very beginning. He's like, hey, I only baptize with water. There's one that comes after me. He baptizes with fire and the Holy Spirit. There's an aspect that Jesus brought that we need to have. So that's if you're if you're dating, and you know, after a year of praying and hoping, and if they're just so against the Lord, then the Lord's not even going to pour Himself out in the way that He's not going to be received. Then maybe that's a whole other conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are married, um, then yeah, you need to commit your life to praying for your spouse. You need to be praying for them in the Spirit that the Holy Spirit would just encounter them in such yeah. a way. Um, that they'll understand where you're coming from. And I believe that uh, the Holy Spirit has a greater responsibility to his bride than we do. So we need to give the responsibility to him by praying to him in his language, in the spirit. So that's my challenge to you is pray for them. I love it. Ready for the next Ready. one? All right. We're talking about dating. Oh, this is only dating. <laughs> I'm just reminding you. You know the answer then. What does submitting to each other look like? Why are you laughing? Okay. Because you clarified before the the question that you're talking about <laughs> dating. Right. Um, we are not uh, submitting to our husband because they're not your husband yet. Hey-o. hey oh. <laughs> Sometimes you got to talk more to the mic to be like, listen. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're dating, there is not an aspect of a covenant submission yet. Okay. Right. We submit to Christ because we're married to Christ. Mm-hmm. We have to understand we're the bride of Christ. Yeah. When you become the bride, you submit as a bride submits to her husband. Sometimes I just want to amen you over here. Do it. I feel Shout like you're preaching. Amen. amen. Clap into the microphone. I keep hitting it. Don't hit it. Just okay. amen me. So we're married to Jesus. Okay. Yeah. So if we're married to Christ, then we're going to be submitted to Christ. If you're married to a husband as a woman, you're submitted to your husband. Right. So the Bible says you submit to everyone out of reverence for Christ. It's not talking about dating submission. Like, oh, I've got to be submitted to my boyfriend. Yeah. Um, actually, no, you don't because no, no. you're not in covenant yet. Yeah. And I'd be really weary of submitting to somebody who has not Dude, submitted to Christ. If he's telling you mm. to submit, like when you're dating, I don't know. I just feel, you know what's, what's amazing? Like, okay. Ladies, let me just talk to you for one second. I am. Fellas, I, I'm coming I, for you next. I totally believe in submission as a woman to your husband. Amen. You have <laughs> never, ever in 11 and something years told me that I have to submit to you. He has led me in such a way that it has been easy to submit. You have led me in such a way that I desire to submit because you are following Jesus and I want to follow you who follows Jesus. You've ne- it's almost like like those people that come and come out and demand respect and it's like you don't have to demand it when you carry like an authority and a respect for others and a place of and that's how I feel with you. So mm-hmm. if you're in a dating relationship and it's like and you're being told to submit, it's like sis what to me, that's a red flag, not because submission is a red flag. Submission is holy and beautiful and wonderful in the covenant of marriage. But in dating, I'd be like, no, get out of here. That's where I bow up a little bit. Mm -hmm. What are you going to say? I'm just listening. I love it. It's great. (laughs) Yeah. I'm just complimenting you all over the place. You said something though, before, when we were talking on the way here about submission, where you said, if it's because uh, the question is, how do we submit to each other? Yeah. And t- like, talk about that. Do oh, you remember? Goodness. Do you remember? I was just having a revelation moment in the car. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I, I actually can't remember fully. But if it's a girl who's asking yeah. this question, who's saying, oh, what about submission? Um, I think you're asking this question because you fear that the man who you are dating, attracted to, mm-hmm. wanting to get married to, um, is actually going to be a passive man and a passive leader. So your fear is wondering, are they going to be passive and um, are they going to submit to me? 
I fear for that question if you're a girl asking that question because you are wanting him mm -hmm. to submit to you and that's a problem because yeah. that's not your role in the marriage. Your role is to respect your husband and to support and you're supposed to be the helper. Mm -hmm. From the beginning of time, that was the role before sin, by the way, before mm -hmm. sin, you were supposed to be, actually, I, I, I could be wrong on that. It might've been after that she was told to help her, but mm -hmm. he, he found a helper fit for no, him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously that happens. Um, it, there was a longing that comes for the husband that came after sin. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, so I think that there is a, a thought of the woman thinking like, right. oh, my husband also needs to submit to me. I need to make sure that I have my rights and my things. Right, right. Um, and there's actually going to be a lack of submission on her part. Right. If, you, if your man is submitting to you, you are out of order. And that is you are not living in the design that God created mm -hmm. us to be in. And that's why, again, as a woman, I can sit here and as a strong woman, I mean, I think you would even attest that I have a strong personality. I'm driven. I'm I'm you sure do. baby. You can come in and compliment me here. Right. I'm carrying all you're the weight for myself. This independent. Kidding. No, I'm not. You're, I'm just kidding. But Dang, there. Wrong. But again, like I'm not like this, like little women or little pez no i'm saying but when you are made in the image of god and you walk in that design that's where you have like harmony mm -hmm. in a relationship mm -hmm. how many and we've talked about this how many clients did i work with when i was a mental health counselor that there was so much dysfunction in their family simply because the mom was some of them were narcissists, but wore the pants in the family and felt like she had to boss dad around. She had to be the head. And now these kids are confusing their identity and their gender and they're self harming and they have eating disorders. And there's so much yeah. chaos yeah. because we are out of order. Yeah. So that's that. That's that. The other side I think is if a guy's asking the question, yes. they're in fear that the one that they are attracted to or dating or interested in or getting ready to propose, whatever, you're afraid of whether or not your future wife is going to submit to you. Mm. Um, and I actually think that you're asking that question with a false understanding of what submission actually looks like. Yeah. Um, it's almost like you think your wife, your future wife is going to supposed to be like there to, to pick you up and carry you as you're pursuing your calling when really you're pursuing your calling and you're pulling her with you and she's coming with you and you're leading her. Mm -hmm. If you're supposed to be the leader, she's submitting to your leadership, not to you requesting submission. Cause well, otherwise what is she submitting to? <laughs> she's not going to submit to something if you don't have anything to be submitted to. So you are supposed to lead your wife. I think this is the problem that we have in dating is that we're looking for what the other one's bringing to the table rather than what we're bringing to the that, table. That yes. The, and this is a lot of the questions yes. is like, what if what they're if they this? Do this? And what, what if, if they, they don't? don't? Yes. How about get yourself so holy, pure before the Lord, chasing after the Lord that you're giving somebody else something to say, wow, like I'm not saying you're trying to like men that you're trying to find a wife to disciple, but you should be living a life that your future wife says, I will follow you to the ends of the earth. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Like you need to have that kind of woman. But in order to have that kind of woman, you have to you have, have to the kind be of life. That kind of yes. man. So that's what I think we have to understand here is that we're, we're already pointing finger at the one that we don't even have. We're like, I want to date, but what are they going to do? <laughs> right. It's like, well, you ain't got them yet. Well, we said it in the beginning, how to find the right one and keep the right one. But mo most and more importantly, how to be the right one. Mm -hmm. And so if you are not someone that if this person was replicated in you in the opposite sex and not talking about, you know, but characteristics, if, if, if you wouldn't want you in the opposite sex, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then you're not ready anyway. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if they can speak in tongues. It doesn't matter if they submit. It doesn't all of this doesn't matter if you can't bring to the table what God has told you to be as yeah. a man or as a woman yeah. and a follower of Jesus. Yeah, that's good. I think it would benefit everybody to go study in the Word. As a man, go study what it means to be a good husband. Yes. Ephesians uh, 5 and 6 talks a lot about that. It's all throughout the Bible, but you can find it there. Uh, women, you can find it in Proverbs 31. All throughout the Word, yeah. you can find what it looks like to be, and honestly, through a lot of the Proverbs, what it means to be a good husband and father and to be a good uh, a wife, wife and, and mother. mother. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that if you can get those things figured out, then you'll understand the standard that you desire to live up to rather than the standard you expect your future spouse to live up to. Right. I also yeah. love um, 2 Timothy 2.22. It says, flee from youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Mm -hmm. It's like, let that be your standard. Yeah. Flee from the ridiculousness of dating if you need to, even just for a moment, 
and get your heart in a place of righteousness, faith, love, peace, and a pure heart with the Lord. Like yeah. that is to me how you can become like the best future spouse for someone. Yeah. And I do believe that God will honor that and will bring that person to you. And will they be perfect? No. We, and neither you, will you. Right. Yeah. And you certainly are, aren't either, whoever I'm talking to. <sighs> Let me help people out. Because this, this is the biggest problem, I think, is the one question people like to ask is, how do I find the right one? How do I know they're the right one? Right. right. All that stuff. Yes. Those two questions, I think, can be figured out into one concept. I'm just going to put it into a picture as best as I can. I want you to imagine you're all uh, surrounded by a bunch of singles, okay? Guys and girls, you're all in this, like, just circle, uh, and they're, they're all around you, right? Right now, the majority of the singles, what they're trying, and, and they're all Christians, right? They're, there's, like, worship music playing, and they're <laughs> whatever, okay? In this field, you can just say a circle of a field. And you're all like, okay, now that we're here, we're all in love with Jesus, right? Let's figure out who's the right one. And then we start dating. We start figuring things out. We're going to go on coffee because we don't want to go on a dinner date because that's so <laughs> old school for some reason. Uh, but we're going to figure it out, right? So we make our pursuit about finding the right one rather than serving the Lord, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the way that I would see it. I would see like that circle that everybody's within with paths coming off like, every picture like a clock, you know, one going off, uh, like 12 different paths, leaving straight lines, leaving this circle. And you found your path and you say, that's where the Lord is calling me to go. And I'm going to run after him and I'm going to chase after him. And I'm not talking about if you feel called to be an evangelist or a pastor, but that could be it too as well. Um, but what it looks like to chase after the things of God, like that scripture you just read. Mm -hmm. And when you start running that race, I believe that you will look next to you and you'll see someone running with you. Mm. And you'll say, wow, in our pursuit of the Lord, we found each other rather than pursuing each other, hoping that you'll go pursue the Lord together. Mm. But we have to actually dedicate and devote our lives to doing that one thing. Yeah. We get that right, you'll find the right one because they'll be true. running right next to you. That's true. I feel like that we need to like make this a real thing. Do a little bonfire with all the singles or something. I'm just and make them all like dance, like <laughs> rave style. Wow. And then it's like, all right, pick your path. And, <laughs> and then they're like, they'll be looking for the the hot girl. I'm like, I'm gonna go with her. She's running that path. <laughs> Found my one. I know how guys think. Yeah. And then they'll run and they'll run for like you know five years and be like, yeah, but she just doesn't love the Lord. Right. Anyways, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> we went down a weird path there. Which path did we go? One of the 12? No. I'm just kidding. Well, that's good. I think, I think this was, there was a few other questions, but we can stop there. I think this was really helpful, I'm sure, for people. This was stuff that I wish I could have heard mm. in my 20s, and it probably would have saved me a lot of heartache mm -hmm. and a lot of stupid decisions. Let but me just say one thing to close us out, y'all. Yeah, do it. I look back at uh, high school and college, um, and I only say high school and college because honestly, I didn't really care about dating until about high school. I, I love sports and friends and whatever. I didn't care about dating. Get into high school, I cared about dating, cared about girls. I was like, oh my gosh, I was five foot flat. Nobody wanted to see me, whatever. Oh, Move on. Wow, you really don't care about my story. I'm really gonna get emotional. <laughs> um, but all of high school and college, you spend searching because you're like, I'm going to meet the right one by the time I'm 18 and get married. I always thought I was going to be married at 18 with the kids. I, just, I was like going to get married so fast. It didn't Sorry. happen that way. But I think about however long that is. What is it? Age 13, 14 till the end of college, 22. Almost a decade of my life hoping to like meet the right one. How much time I wasted pursuing what never happened. Mm. And then I met you. So I literally think about all the wasted time. So we spend so much time stressing out and hoping for that I'm going to meet this one. And you look back when you're married and you're like, wow, I wasted a lot of time. Mm -hmm. If I just would have waited, I would have known. Like when I, when, when, look, when you just popped up into my world, <laughs> it, like for me, it was, this is the one. So if I would have waited though, I, I knew a lot of girls. I, I could see like, oh, this is probably what it'd be like if I married them. This would be the safest <laughs> choice, the boring one. Terrible. This is the stay at home mom. Uh, I don't know, the breastfeed still are three years, the kids are three oh years my old. Oh God in heaven. Well, I just know what it looked like. Anyways, I, I, just, I just had a feeling. Anyways, we're going off here. <laughs> Get back to how great but, it was when you met but me. But when I met you, I knew that you were the one and I, I just felt like, man, I wasted so much time. Right. So for those of you who are stressing out, don't worry about wasting your time so much. Yeah. Enjoy the season you're in. You will miss the freedom that you had in some aspects. Don't worry, I don't miss it with you. 
Um, but you'll definitely miss it if you wasted it. So yeah. don't waste the time that you have in your single season. Amen. Amen. Amen.